we have a very very important topic today and that is of bullying so it is a um, very serious problem because the majority majority of american kids report being bullied at some point in their school careers 14% of students report experiencing trauma from bullying and 14% of students in grades 10 to 12 and 25% of students in grades 4 to 8 report experiencing academic troubles as a result of bullying so this is a huge huge public health issue and i think uh, needs to be addressed and also um we as parents Uh, and adults need to be equipped with the tools to recognize that bullying uh, when bullying is a problem and what exactly is uh, something that we can do and what are the resources available to us uh, that we can do something <coughs> about it so let's uh, get uh, straight into the topic what is bullying so the best definition that i saw of bullying was described as unwanted aggressive repetitive behavior amongst kids that involves a either a real or perceived power imbalance. Mhm. So the bully feels like they're better than the victim, either that they're physically bigger or more intelligent or high, have a higher social standing. Mhm. So it's like a form of intimidation. Exactly. Okay. And is it uh, it can it be verbal? Is it does it have to be physical? It doesn't have it can be verbal or physical. and you see it in many different ways and sometimes in a combination of of all those but mm-hmm. physical attacks can be things like you know picking up hitting a child or stealing things from them verbal attacks can be taunting name calling mm-hmm. um it can be social mm-hmm. like excluding them from groups or spreading rumors about them and recently another another category that we're seeing is cyberbullying on right. the internet right that's huge yes it is Okay. So little things like for example, if a child comes home and says that, "Oh, my friend uh keeps taking my lunch every day." Mm-hmm. So that is actually a form of bullying. Yes, it is. The key is that it's repetitive behavior. Mhm. Cuz if it's an isolated incident, um like once know, or Yeah, it happened once or someone just taunted you or called your name or something like that. That mm-hmm. doesn't may not necessarily fall in that co- category but if it's you know repetitive behavior like that mm-hmm. then it's considered to be bullying. Hmm. Okay. So basically it is um, uh, a lot of repetitive behavior intimidation can be physical can be um mental yes. as well. Yes. Yes, all those things. Okay. Um what are some of the ways uh, <coughs> that uh, bullying can be mental? Like I mentioned it's um like excluding you from certain activities uh-huh. um and trying to keep you from having you know being included in with your friend or group of friends spreading rumors about them uh-huh. those are all things that you know you can consider them to be social or psychological ex- you know can uh-huh. affect the person if they're excluding them from from their peer groups. Mhm. And I guess it can be emotional as well, yes. right? Mm-hmm. So if you're using words to hurt or humiliate another person. Right. right then uh, name calling mm-hmm. uh, ethnic slurs uh, making racist racist comments right. that can also be a form of bullying correct okay um why does it occur well there's many reasons there's i it's hard to say that it's just one thing but i think one of the key factors that we talked about is there is a perceived mm-hmm. imbalance from mm-hmm. the bully to their victim they feel like they're stronger than them and that the other person is weak and that they can dominate them. Mm-hmm. But there's um different reasons why it happens and one of the common reasons is bully often the bullies themselves they have their own mental issues. A lot of them have low self-esteem mm-hmm. or they have problems with depression, anxiety. A lot of them have problems at home mm-hmm. and they feel like hurting others makes them feel better about themselves or gives them some sort of control in their life. Wait a minute. So we assume that the bully is somebody stronger, but what mm-hmm. you're telling me is that the bully is somebody who's actually weaker because they have all these issues and this is their way of acting out. Right. That's a way of coping with it, but it can it can happen in the other way too. Okay. Yeah, so 
you know, I've seen it both ways. There's a lot of kids like this who, you know, bullying is kind of a coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. And then there's some kids who are doing it because uh, they feel like it it maintains their, some sort of social standing or helps them improve their social standing amongst their friends or in school. Mm -hmm. Mr. Popular. Exactly. Popular. Yeah. yeah. So it, it can happen in both ways. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it can be a, a combination of both of those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was reading a, a study um, and which said that bully, bullying in the past used to be like, you know, uh, threatening my name calling or uh -huh. ignore somebody or you can even damage their property like we said, right. taking away somebody's lunchbox or tearing up their homework mm -hmm. or destroying their textbooks or whatever. Today's bullies tend to be more violent uh -huh. and can um, bully by humiliating and mm -hmm. manipulating somebody and then using isolating and ostr ostracizing techniques. Yes. Wow. So, yeah, you're right. that I, Bullying has always been a problem mm -hmm. amongst kids, I think mm -hmm. forever, as long mm -hmm. as kids have been together. Right. But it does seem like it's more prevalent now. And it seems like the kind of behaviors seem, you know, out of the ordinary from things that we may have mm -hmm. experienced or seen when we were younger. Right. And, you know, now they have other resources like the Internet and things like that that bullies can use as well. Mm hmm so at what age or grade level is it prevalent the most? It can really happen at any grade level. I mean, it can even happen as young as, you know, elementary school with kindergartners going through junior high and high school. Mm -hmm. I would say it's probably maybe a little bit more prevalent in junior high or high school age kids, or at least it's more the bullying seems to get more intense, but it can really happen at in any grade level. So it's something you should be aware of, aware of mm -hmm. with your children at any grade level. Mm-hmm. Okay, so junior high or high school and I guess uh, even middle school mm -hmm. is uh, a big uh, place yes. where bullying mm -hmm. can take Even place. elementary school. Even elementary yes. school. Yep, okay. it's all, it affects kids of pretty much all ages. What does a bully look like? Is it the big guys, uh, you know, <laughs> the ones who are taller than everybody or, you know? No, not always. Not I mean, always. Sometimes there's the bully who's really small, but they're just very aggressive and they're picking on some other kids. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the other kids are not wanting to retaliate. So they don't always have to be that big guy. I mean, sometimes they can be, mm -hmm. but, you know, they can be, we described a little bit about some of the issues that you may see in a bully, but they can be, you know, kids who are easily frustrated or tend to have anger problems. Mm -hmm. um, they may have difficulty following rules or have violent tendencies. And a lot of them have problems at home also with their parents. But, you know, that's one kind of profile of bully. But then we also mentioned that there's other ones who are like the popular kids and, you know, they feel like they need to dominate others mm -hmm. um, to, to improve their social standing. So it doesn't always have to be a kid who's really big. Mm -hmm. I mean, we kind of have that in our in our mindset where there's a big kid who takes the, right. their lunch money. But it happens with little kids. Mm -hmm. It happens with girls, too. It's a big problem amongst girls, even. Mm -hmm. Girls bullying other girls or even girls bullying other boys. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And um, what about a victim? Is there a certain profile of a vic of a victim, a certain background? Is it because mm -hmm. of maybe the color of your skin or what you look like? Uh, mm -hmm. Is there a certain kind of uh, child who falls prey to bullying more often than others? Right. Um, as far as appearance, it doesn't have to be necessarily one thing, but I think there's probably some traits that you see. Mm -hmm. And um, it could be anyone pretty much who looks different amongst you know, their, their peers. Mm -hmm. And it could be kids who maybe come from a different race or a national origin. It could be someone from a different religion. Sometimes it can be kids that are overweight. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, sometimes it's kids who are have disabilities, like special needs kids. Mm -hmm. But I think basically what you see is they're kids who they may have low self-esteem or they may feel like they're weak. And then the bullies tend to target those kids and prey on those kind of kids. Mm -hmm. Is it the nice kids who get bullied? <laughs> they all i think all kinds of kids get bullied okay yeah yeah i think probably those kind of kids are more easily targeted mm -hmm. because kids who basically who wouldn't necessarily stand up for themselves mm -hmm. or who may have a reaction like they cry easily or they get really easily angry mm -hmm. then it kind of reinforces the bullying behavior because that's mm -hmm. the kind of response that the bully want to see that wants to see mm -hmm. 
So I think those kind of kids are the ones that they target and get bullied more often. Mm -hmm. And you said something very interesting. You said kids who have a perception of being different. Yes. So it's not only that you are different, but you have that realization that you are different from the others, mm -hmm. which can somehow reflect in your own behavior which can hmm. result in you being vulnerable to bullying. Right. A lot of times it's kids who are like socially isolated or they may not have a lot of friends and, you know, they may tend to get picked on by other children. Mm -hmm. What about jealousy? Like it can be somebody who's super talented and super uh, mm -hmm. intelligent and they may also be a target of bullying. Right. Right. right absolutely. That, that happens as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like I said, a lot of times the bullying is not just about... Um, you know, showing their power or picking on a weak person, but um, it's also, you know, um, low self-esteem in mm -hmm. children or insecurities in children, mm -hmm. and they're using this as a coping mechanism. So that can definitely be one reason why they might bully someone. Okay, very good to know. How can we as parents um, recognize signs that my child is being bullied? What should we look out for? You may see um, and explain injuries on the child. You mm -hmm. may see that they have uh, lost or damaged things like clothing or school supplies. Mm -hmm. um, you may see changes in habits like they don't want to eat or they're having problems sleeping or having nightmares. Mm -hmm. You may see a sudden lack of desire to go to school. They may fake injuries like stomach ache or illness like headaches and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, you may also see problems with their grades. You may see a sudden decline in the grades and just maybe a, a lack of interest in things that they used to enjoy that they don't want to do anymore. They want to avoid certain people or certain social situations. Hmm. So those are all common, common risk factors that you should look for as a parent. Okay. And uh, changes in personality. Mm -hmm. So the yes. child may actually become um, very quiet and withdrawn mm -hmm. or crying to go to school. Right. Right. Sometimes you see that. Sometimes you may see them become more angry. Mm-hmm. Sometimes their kids may not even be able to express themselves. Right. And uh, um, uh, I have the example of uh, one of my uh, son's friends mm -hmm. who would cry to <coughs> take the bus home. Uh -huh. uh, so he entered middle school and all of a sudden he would tell his parents, come pick me up, come pick me up. And, uh, you know, the mom was really worried and she talked to me and she's like, I don't know what's going on with my child. And it took her a long time to get to the bottom of it that actually when the child was lining up to get onto the bus, then other kids would uh, throw his backpack at the end of the line or kick him out of line and uh, bully him essentially. And uh, and he would hate that so much that he would just say, I don't want to get onto the bus, you know, on school premises. Right. But I've seen, uh, we have seen these scary, scary videos, hidden camera videos uh -huh. of kids being bullied on buses. Right. How common is that, do you think? I think it's, I think it's pretty common. I think it's as common as bullying in school or anywhere else. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just, you know, those kids being confined in a small space like that and it's an environment that's conducive to to kids fighting with each other bullying each other and a lot of times there's just one bus driver who's focusing on driving and can't keep an eye on all those kids mm -hmm. so i think it's just the, the environment that it's in mm -hmm. makes it kind of a chaotic environment where right. you, you tend to see bullying there mm -hmm. it's in the presence of an adult so kids would then not uh, resort to bullying but you know it's, it doesn't seem to stop them Right, like I said, the adult is driving a car, mm -hmm. so there's only so much they can they, they can do. do or so much they can see in a long school bus. Mm -hmm. So and you know, so you know, it, I think it depends on who the bus driver is and what the school's rules are. But mm -hmm. you know, it's hard for them to keep an eye on all those kids, all those in, a, kids. in a full school bus. Right. All right. What about teachers? Mm -hmm. Because we're we're talking about parents who can recognize <laughs> the signs of bullying and what they need to look out for. But what about teachers? Um, what kind of signs should they be looking out for? And then what can? Uh, and I guess we'll talk about that a little mm -hmm. later in the show when we're talking about what can schools and teachers in particular do about the bullying. Right. So teachers, as well as parents, have a role. Everyone has a role in the prevention of bullying. Mm -hmm. It's not just the parent. It's, it's, it's the parents, it's the teachers, the principals of the school. It's even other children in the school. Everyone has a role mm -hmm. to make a successful campaign against, 
against bullying. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> the teacher should um, look for kind of similar signs, like um, changes in a, in a child's behavior, like they may seem more withdrawn, mm-hmm. or um, they may be having problems with their grades. They may see sudden change in their grades when they were maybe once a good student or had interests and they seem to be um, declining. Mm-hmm. So those are similar signs that a parent will look for, the teacher should look for also. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, I guess that's where the whole individual attention and class sizes comes in. There's some mm-hmm. teachers who may... Some are better than others. Some are better at than others. Keeping an eye on that. But, you know, it's also the child's responsibility mm-hmm. to communicate to an authority figure. Mm-hmm. If they're getting bullied, they should speak with their teacher or speak to a counselor or their principal. Mm-hmm. So this is a, a common problem as kids. A lot of times they feel scared to tell an authority figure... But they should be communicating with this with their teacher. So the teacher should be keeping an eye on it. Mm-hmm. But the child should tell the teacher also, or even if it's not the child being bullied, the mm-hmm. other kids in the class mm-hmm. who may be witnessing the acts should be mm-hmm. reporting it to the teacher. Okay. Let's stay on this for a little bit. Why is it that kids are scared of speaking out against bullying? Well, I think there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, one is they may fear retaliation from the bully. Mm-hmm. where they feel like if they're tattling on them mm-hmm. um, that the bully is going to hurt them even more or do more things to them. Mm-hmm. And maybe they don't want to be labeled as a tattletale or a snitch. Right, so that's, because mm-hmm. that's emphasized very right. early on that don't be a tattletale. <laughs> right, so they're afraid to, to be a t- tattletale and they don't want to tell. Mm-hmm. And then I think a lot of times, it's, and this may have been the case in the child you mentioned about the school bus, is they feel embarrassed or they feel humiliated. Mm-hmm. And they don't feel comfortable speaking to their parents about it because they're embarrassed about it. Mm-hmm. About what are my parents going to think? Or I don't want them to know that this is happening to me. Mm-hmm. So I think those are all common reasons that we see, mm-hmm. which is why it's so important for parents to be looking for these signs and also for parents to communicate with their, with their children mm-hmm. and know what's going on in school and their lives, what kind of friends that they have. Mm-hmm. Because that's the, that's the best thing as far as prevention for of bullying is having a good relationship with your child and communicating well with them. Mm-hmm. Now, that'll give them one confidence. And two is if you see a change in their behavior, you'll pick up on it right away mm-hmm. and they'll feel comfortable talking to you about it. I see a lot of parents with their heads buried in the sand. Okay, mm-hmm. The child is going to a school. It's a mixed school. Okay, Obviously, they have uh, friends. Why don't our parents do that? I mean... It's like if you invite the child's friends over to your house, you will get an idea of Mm -hmm. what kind of friends your child has, Mm -hmm. the interaction, the dynamics, the relationships. Or Mm -hmm. if your child has no friends, you'll know that uh, as well, right? Can you shed some light on that? (laughs) Yeah, I think uh, in general that parents, you know, need to... Have be better at communicating with their children and being involved in their lives and knowing, you know, what's what's going on with their, in school or outside of school. What kind of friends they have, if they have friends, mm-hmm. what their interests are, and you know, I think that kind of is at the root of the problem. Is we don't always communicate, and this is a problem for all parents, but mm-hmm. they don't communicate well with their kids, or or sometimes they don't feel. This is a common thing I've seen with parents is they don't feel comfortable speaking with their kids on mm-hmm. certain topics. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times they'll ask the doctor or someone else to talk, can you talk to my child about this? Right. And a lot of times I'll, I'll tell them that, you know, as a parent, this is your responsibility to mm-hmm. speak to your child about this because they'll feel more comfortable with you mm-hmm. who's raised them and knows them your whole life as opposed to a doctor they see a few times or whoever it may be, a teacher or a counselor. Mm-hmm. Someone they see a few times, they can trust them, but... There's no one that you can trust more than your your parents, mm-hmm. and they are the ones that should be keeping, you know, keeping the lines of communication open mm-hmm. and knowing exactly what's going on in the child's life. So this um, parent observed that her child, who's usually very shy, um, mm-hmm. her interaction with her sister changed, mm-hmm. and that's how the parent uh, figured out that the child right. is being bullied, and then got to the bottom of it, and then basically asked the child to mm-hmm. handle it herself. What do you think about that? Um, what should a parent's role be? Well, I think first of all, I'd like to commend this parent for picking up on that. Mm-hmm. She said that she noticed she wasn't as patient mm-hmm. at home with her or she'd be easily frustrated. Mm-hmm. 
So that's good that she picked up on that because a lot of times the kids, they don't want to tell you for the reasons we talked about, about what's going on with them. Mm -hmm. So um, she mentioned talking to her child about, you know, how to interact with other kids and what to say to them. And I think that's a, that's an important thing is, co is parents should teach their, coach their kids on what to say and to stand up for themselves mm -hmm. and not to be too reactive or easily frustrated with them because, as she mentioned, the bullies kind of feed off that. So if they see that you kind of cave in and you're always crying about it, then that reinforces their behavior. Mm -hmm. So you have to stay calm. If you have to walk away, walk away. But you can coach them. And a lot of kids, it doesn't come naturally, especially kids who tend to be more quiet or reserved. You have to coach them to be assertive and what to say against a bully in those kind of situations. Mm -hmm. But one thing I like to say, though, is that as a parent, you should never feel afraid to speak to the teacher, mm -hmm. even if it's something small, because the child has a right to be in a safe environment, in a safe learning environment. Mm -hmm. So in your your perception may be that it's a small thing, Thing and it's just part of childhood being teased. But for your child, it may be a much bigger deal for them. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to ever say, you know, this is up to you or this is just part of childhood. Mm -hmm. You should, if you can coach them and tell them to do their part, but you can also talk to the teachers about it or talk to the principal about it. Mm -hmm. And I don't think any issue is too small if they're, if you're seeing changes in their behavior. Obviously, if you're seeing changes in them being affected. You know, they're not as patient, or you see it affecting their relationship with their siblings, and obviously it's something serious enough that's affecting their behavior. Mm -hmm. So don't take it lightly, and don't be afraid to talk to their teachers about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I guess parents may fear as uh, being seen as being overprotective, and that's why they shy away from uh, taking any steps, mm -hmm. right? Or number two, they may <coughs> fear that the school may retaliate against their child. Yeah, I mean, I don't see the school retaliating. If it's a valid issue, and with the way that bullying has been in the public light recently, mm -hmm. more so than ever, then and m most schools have some sort of bullying prevention programs or rules for for bullying. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see them just blowing it off. Okay. I mean, that's not that's not the norm. Mm -hmm. um, if you bring up an issue to them, they they have to do take some measures to to address it. Mm -hmm. So, you know. I, I wouldn't let that be a deterrent to not speaking to them about it. Okay. And you can start off with just, you don't have to necessarily go straight to the superintendent of the school. You can speak to their teacher about it initially, and then depending on your response, you know, take it up higher to a principal and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. All right. The difference between mm -hmm. bullying and abuse. Well, I think she's right in that it is similar and I think the difference in this context when we're talking about bullying is we're talking about um, something between kids and mm -hmm. we're talking about a repetitive behavior. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about a very specific kind of situation. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess abuse is just kind of more of a broad, a broad term about you know, verbal or physical abuse. Mm -hmm. So I think just in this context, this is more specific to school-age children and it's more of a repetitive, unwanted behavior like we talked about at the beginning of the show. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, we're talking about uh, kids who are being bullied. So now your child has come up, come up to you and said, I'm being bullied at school. Mm -hmm. You know, my homework is getting <coughs> torn. My backpack is being stolen and hidden or being hung up in the tree. Um, what, do, what recourse do you as a parent have then? Well, first, um, you speak to your child and get all the facts together find out exactly what happened, how often it's happening. Mm -hmm. And you may even consider writing it down. Mm -hmm. So you have that information when you when you take it up to the school. When did it happen? How often did mm -hmm. it happen? Who it is. Who it is. Yeah, who's involved. And then once you do that with your child, then you know, I would bring it up with their teacher. Okay, so first you contact the child's mm -hmm. teacher. Should you just pick up the phone, make an appointment, email them? What should you do? I would do it in person. Okay. Yeah, I would um, set up a meeting in person, mm -hmm. and you can express your concerns, and you have the information as far as what exactly all the events that happened with you mm -hmm. to give concrete evidence. And you know, I would you would do it with the, ch the t child teacher. You may consider even um, doing it with the principal or having the principal involved in a meeting or sit in with the meeting. Should you ever call the bully's parents and talk to them directly, not get the school involved? I think you should always get the school involved first. Okay. Um, usually getting the the, 
parents of the bully involved, in my experience, usually doesn't work very well. Because mm -hmm. sometimes that can be more confrontational. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times doesn't help. Okay. So I would try to use the school as a mediator between mm -hmm. the, the child or, or the parents. Mm -hmm. So I, think, I don't think that's the best idea, always going straight to the parents, especially if you're not involving the school first. Mm -hmm. Okay. So go make an appointment with the child's teacher, maybe the principal, and uh, be very specific mm -hmm. about the facts and even name the child who yes. is doing the bullying. Okay. Oh, yes. It de you definitely need to name the child mm -hmm. in the instance by that are happening. It can't be just a general thing. Oh, he's getting bullied. But you should get your facts together, give specific dates, times, names, mm -hmm. instance of exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. What can you expect from the school? Well, <clears throat> every school has um, some sort of rules against bullying and uh, bullying prevention program. Mm -hmm. So, as we talked about, this, it's the school's responsibility to create a safe learning environment. Mm -hmm. And if that's not happening, then they need to be fixing the problem. Mm -hmm. So, they have rules and regulations in place. It's their job to fix these um, problems if they're happening to your child. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I um, looked up my child's uh, school, uh -huh. and uh, they actually have a sheet online mm -hmm. which talks about what they do from a school's perspective if um, there is an, uh, an allegation of bullying against right. a child. So basically what they said was, they outlined some of the steps, that the school staff will first investigate the bullying immediately. Uh -huh. Then the school staff will... They said they made it very clear that they will never meet with your child and the child who bullied them at the same time. You know, that face-to-face -face right, meeting, like, did right. you do that? No, you didn't. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> right. so, so they're not going to do that because that could actually be very intimidating or embarrassing right. for the child. School staff will never share who reported the incident. Very, very important. Yes. Because that's what is um, going to keep your child safe in right. his or her mind, right? Right, and that's another important responsibility of the school is having a uh, anonymous reporting program mm -hmm. where people can, where it could be parents or it could be the victim or it can be other child mm -hmm. who can um, report the incident without, you know, having to get specific their name or you know fear retaliation from other kids or a bully. Mm -hmm. So that's also a very good point. Okay. Then the counselor will meet with your child to learn about the bullying that he or she has experienced and will develop a plan to help keep your child safe. So in the instance of the school bus line that I told you about uh -huh. with my child's <coughs> friend, uh, when the bullying was reported, mm -hmm. they did a very simple thing. They put a teacher out at the school bus line uh -huh. um, who basically stood there and stopped the bullying. Right. And um, the bullying then stopped, you know. There what was about on the school bus? Uh, somehow it didn't take place on the school <laughs> okay. bus, but it would only take place in the line. Mm -hmm. And they had made a game of it because uh, they wanted to get... Who it, the game was who would get onto the bus first. Uh -huh. And they would bully all the kids <laughs> who were standing right. in line. So, yeah, that was a very simple solution mm -hmm. to, you know, a problem that was very distressing for this child. Mm -hmm. But... Like we talked about before, it's important that you report it to the school authorities because right. they can't do anything about it if they don't know about it. Mm -hmm. And going back to the school bus situation, uh, I guess that's why there are now cameras uh -huh. in school buses. Uh -huh. And sometimes they have an extra adult who's right. there besides the driver mm -hmm. uh, to whose, whose specific job is to make sure that there is... Um, uh, no writing on the bus, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so going back to what the school uh, has developed, uh, the bullying plan, once the counselor meets with the child, then the administrator will meet with the students suspected of taking part in the bullying. And uh, this administrator will make it clear to the students that bullying is against school rules and will not be tolerated and if appropriate the administrator will administer consequences to those who bullied and and notify their parents so it can be anything from reprimanding to uh, detentions to suspensions and right. so on and so forth right mm -hmm. 
So that is what they uh, have outlined. And they said that basically to give the school reasonable time to investigate and hear both sides of the story. Mm -hmm. um, so that they want to make sure that, you know, there are no false allegations as well right. made about uh, kids. Yeah, I think that's a I think that's a good outline for a plan for when bullying is reported. And I think I think most schools have something similar to that. Mm hmm. What about uh, community resources? Are there any community resources that you can recommend or outline for us? Um, there is. Uh, you can. There's general ones that you can, you know, visit with, like you know, faith-based groups, like maybe involved in a church or mosque or temple or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes neighborhood associations or town hall meetings mm -hmm. that may be a good resource to meet with other families or parents that may be experiencing. Um, similar problems with their child, mm -hmm. and even your your pediatrician mm -hmm. is a good place to start to get advice or get resources mm -hmm. on what to do. PTO maybe in your school mm -hmm. that may be a good good avenue to go as well. Okay, now let's turn the tables a little bit. What if you uh, realize that your child is a bully? Now, uh, bullies, according to researchers, are not born, they are made. Mm -hmm. And uh, what they found that uh, children who bully are at risk for in engaging in more serious violent acts like fighting and carrying weapons. Uh, boys who said that they bullied others at least once a week in school, 52% had carried weapons in the past month. I mean, these are pretty huge numbers and mm -hmm. even girls um, they find that 30% uh, of girls who had bullied others in school at least once a week reported carrying weapons later on in life that those are pretty staggering numbers mm -hmm. so we talked about identifying um, signs and symptoms if your child is being bullied how can you identify signs and symptoms if your child is a bully and why should parents care well, they should care for all the reasons that you just mentioned <laughs> with a bully, because the problem is um, the problem is with the victim and also the person doing the the bullying. They both need help, mm -hmm. and you know, you, first you should make sure that your child, if they're a bully, make sure they understand that what they're doing is wrong and hurting others. Mm -hmm. And if you need to discipline them, you should discipline them. Mm -hmm. Then I would try to have them remedy the situation. So if they you know, broke something or stole someone's property, then they should repair it or pay for it mm -hmm. or write an apology to that person. Mm -hmm. So basically, as a, as a parent, you want to teach your child to have empathy for other people. Mm -hmm. And you should model good behavior yourself. Right. So, you know, those are things, steps that you should take if you notice that your child is bullying. But, you know, things that you may look out for is you know if they're if you see them being suddenly more aggressive, mm -hmm. if you see them you know keeping company with other children who seem very aggressive because usually kids who tend to bully they're with other kids who tend to bully also. Mm -hmm. If you notice them get in a frequent fight or you're getting frequent calls from the principal or they have having frequent detentions things like that, those are all kind of warning signs that you need to investigate further about. You know m maybe my child is being involved in these kind of things. Mm -hmm. And what if uh, what if your child actually witnesses bullying and f a friend of theirs or some even a stranger, they're just walking by mm -hmm. and they see them getting bullied. What should they do? Should they intervene or not? They should intervene, at least verbally they should intervene because mm -hmm. I think it's everyone's responsibility to prevent bullying. And that's what we talked about is it's not just the child or the teacher. Everyone has a responsibility. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the anti-bullying prevention programs in the school that's kind of the um the basis of their um program is that this this is something that will not be tolerated in the school mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be just the victim but people who are witnessing it have a responsibility to stand up for that person or mm -hmm. to report it to the teachers or to the principal mm -hmm. um and just basically try to help the victim befriend them or let them let the bully know that it's not this is not appropriate mm -hmm. behavior Mm -hmm. And a lot of times those bullies, they do that kind of behavior because if they see other kids laughing mm -hmm. or they think it's funny, then they, like what we said, it kind of reinforces their behavior and they want to do it more. Mm -hmm. But if you let them know that this is not funny or this is not something that we think is cool, mm -hmm. then the bully won't do it. Mm -hmm. So you should, that's another important thing. You should teach your children 
to not just be bystanders and just ignore it. Mm-hmm. It should not be tolerated. Okay. Okay. Good to know. And uh, what about cyberbullying? What kinds of um, bullying takes place through the internet and mm-hmm. what can be done about it? Yeah, cyberbullying is any kind of bullying through electronic technology where it could be cell phones or texting, can be on the internet or social media sites like Facebook, mm-hmm. um, anything that involves a computer or a phone or whatever. Mm-hmm. So right. um, it can be you know, things on a phone, spreading rumors, texting, sexting, mm-hmm. things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I've even seen online sometimes um, people create fake profiles mm-hmm. for another person, pretending to be another person. So that happens. Or just harassing people on, on Facebook or by email constantly. Mm-hmm. So cyberbullying is a, is a big issue now because this is something that happens outside the school and it can happen 24 hours a day. Mm-hmm. And a child may feel like they can't ever escape this because instead of it just being during school hours or constantly being harassed throughout the day or whenever, even when they're not at, mm-hmm. not in school, they're just at home. Mm-hmm. Or if they're getting um, threatening messages on their cell phone or something. Mm-hmm. So it's a little bit more difficult to deal with because, you know, people can, it's harder to track and it, sometimes it's harder to identify the perpetrator mm-hmm. and they can reach such a wide audience easily. Mm-hmm. Right. So, and, it's, and oftentimes it's hard to, to, you know, take those things down. Right. Um, off a website or from texting or whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay, so a couple of very, very good questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's deal with the first one. Okay. So the first question was um, an incident where her child witnessed a, witness a two kids fighting or one being bullied, and when questioned by the teacher or principal, they were afraid to tell the truth because they were afraid of retaliation from mm-hmm. the bully. Mm-hmm. So, um, as a parent, you should teach your child to, one, in that incidence, to tell the truth about what happened. Mm -hmm. Because, one, is the next day they could be the victim, and how would they feel if someone else saw that and just ignored it? Didn't stand up for them. Yes, or didn't stand up for them. So, that's something you need to explain to your child, Mm -hmm. um, that it's everyone's responsibility Mm -hmm. to, you know, prevent bullying and Mm -hmm. they they should be telling the truth Mm -hmm. now it's the school's responsibility like we talked about is that they should not be together so and there should be a way to report anonymously where they don't fear retaliation Mm -hmm. so if the principal or teacher is making it very obvious that they're talking to the child and no one else about the incident then that's a problem Mm -hmm. because they should feel you know comfortable reporting something like this without being singled out Mm -hmm. so you know i don't know exactly what happened in this situation or how th- how that arrangement was. Mm-hmm. But that's the school's job. It's part of the responsibility. Like we said, there needs to be a safe reporting mm-hmm. avenue where people don't fear retaliation. But you should always teach your children to tell the truth, um, especially in, in situations like this, because one, it's the right thing to do. And two, the next day it may be them or a friend of theirs or someone else or their sibling or sister or whoever. Mm-hmm. So, and they wouldn't want the same thing to happen to themselves out of fear of being bullied. So, what should the parent do? Should the parent then contact the <coughs> principal, or should the parent send the child back, saying, "Okay, now you need to go and explain why you didn't, didn't uh, um, report the truth uh, that you were scared." Should the parent go with the child, or should the child go by themselves? I mean, I think that that's up to you um, based on the specific situation and what you know about your child and their personality. But if they're timid or afraid, it may be a good idea for you to go go there. And one, if you feel like they were being singled out and mm-hmm. they were feeling, being threatened, um, then you should address that too with the principal. Mm-hmm. Like like we said, it should be they should be able to report the issue without fear of retaliation. Okay. All right. And then on to the second question. Uh, how to build up confidence mm-hmm. in your child in the household that even though they may be different, maybe uh-huh. an accent is different, the color of your skin is right. different, disability or whatever. How do you do that? What well, starts early, um, it doesn't just happen when they're teenagers. <laughs> I mean, you have to start when they're little mm-hmm. as, you know, one being involved in their life, playing with them, trying to uh, communicate with them well. And all those things we mentioned before, they're important mm-hmm. um, to have the child gain confidence. Mm-hmm. Um, and also yourself modeling good behavior. 
Mm -hmm. As he mentioned, sometimes the parents are fighting or they may see them bullying other people or other people in their workplace or another place. So the the parents have to model this kind of behavior, too. So the parents, so the the children learn from that. Mm -hmm. But as far as in older kids, when they they are getting bullied, you want to put them in a situation to succeed where they gain confidence. Mm -hmm. So have them do things that they enjoy, like maybe Boy Scouts or some sort of sports activities, someplace where they... They get to meet other kids, make new friends, mm-hmm. um, feel good about themselves, which will increase their confidence. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, if they make more friends, then they're less likely to be bullied because their friends will stand up for them. Mm-hmm. Okay. So just uh, to sum up, if you are the victim, uh, tell your parents or tell a trusted adult, tell a teacher mm-hmm. um, that you are bullying because they are the ones who can help stop the bullying. Should you, as a child who is being bullied, um, fight back or not? Yeah, so I think that's really up to the parents on a to what they're going to teach their their kids as far as on a case by case basis. I mean, one, I would say that I would never tell a child that he doesn't have the right to defend himself if they're being physically abused, mm-hmm. but. Violence is not always the solution to these problems and oftentimes makes it worse. So I wouldn't go into it with the mindset like, well, today I'm going to teach this bully a lesson by fighting with him. Mm-hmm. Um, because, one, that teaches them that violence is a way to solve your problems, mm-hmm. which is not. So I think something like that, as opposed to just defending yourself, are two different things. Okay. So usually I don't advocate fighting, typically. Mm -hmm. The other thing you have to consider is in situations like this, for schools, they have very strict rules about fighting. Mm -hmm. And even if they know a child is being bullied, but they retaliated, like they punched or did something like that, I've seen these kids, they get suspended from the school and it goes on their permanent record. Mm -hmm. Even they know know that the other child started the fight, they instigated it, but the other person retaliated still gets Mm -hmm. suspended also. Mm -hmm. So for those reasons, I, I don't think that's always the best way to go. Mm-hmm. So, but like I said, at the same time, I wouldn't ever tell a child that he doesn't have a right to get defend, to defend himself if he's getting himself. if he's getting pummeled. Okay. So, you know, that's something to, to keep in mind. But you want them to be assertive verbally, or you know, other, just standing up to the bully without necessarily resorting to violence. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, don't f- you can defend yourself, but don't engage in um, aggressive or violent behavior. Right. Don't try and bully those who bully you. Right. Right. Um, And uh, uh, some of our callers as well uh, said this point that try not to show anger or fear. Mm -hmm. And uh, because uh, students who bully like to see that they can upset you. Right. So if you're just shrugging it off. Right. You know, or if they're making fun of your shirt, you make fun of your shirt and laugh it off. Yeah. And if they're not getting a reaction out of you, there goes all the fun. Right. Right. And uh, the other thing is uh, w- the point that you made just now is calmly tell the student to stop and then walk away. Mm-hmm. So um, these are some very, very important points mm-hmm. about how a child can actually um, react on the spot when they are being bullied. Right. And one other thing I just wanted to add as far as the parent's role in this and helping their child if they're being bullied Mm -hmm. is they should not um, criticize their child as far as, you know, I've seen this a lot of times in parents, they'll say, well, how can you let that child do that to you? Mm -hmm. Or how can you let them do that to you? Why didn't you do this? Or why didn't you do that? Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of times kids, when they're going through situations like this, they're, they're having low self-esteem and they're having a lot of problems with problems with like this in the school and you sh- as a parent you should support them emotionally mm-hmm. and boost their self-esteem don't and not make them feel like they're down. responsible yeah don't put them down make, don't make them feel like they're responsible for it mm-hmm. because they're not they're not right. responsible for it right. so you know you need to be teach them to be assertive and stand up for themselves mm-hmm. but don't you know put them down and say why didn't you do that or why didn't you fight them back or you know, why are you letting these kids pick on you? Mm-hmm. Those are not words that you should you should use. Okay. You should be positive and try to boost their self-esteem. Excellent. Is bullying preventable? Of course. <laughs> That's why we're doing this show, right? <laughs> okay. And what are some of the ways that uh, we can prevent bullying? So, like we talked about, um, 
you know, one as teaching your kids at an early age that it's not acceptable behavior. Mm-hmm. Um, and two, it's teaching that, you know, if you're just a bystander and seeing it, mm-hmm. that it's not appropriate to mm-hmm. just let it go and mm-hmm. not do anything about it. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a good place to start. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, like I said, as far as the schools, they have programs in place to help prevent these kind of things. And they have steps that they take to help remedy an issue. Mm-hmm. Okay. It starts in the home, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, it starts in the house um, for the bullying and the victims. Right. Okay. And uh, there are some tips uh, that I found uh, uh, that uh, kids can do to avoid situations in which bullying is likely to happen. And uh, these are some of the things that they can do. Avoid areas of the school where there are not many kids or teachers around. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you aren't alone in the bathroom or locker room. Sit near the front of the bus with friends Mm -hmm. when possible. So make those friends on your bus route. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leave expensive things and lots of money at home. Don't bring them to school. Sit with a group of friends at lunch and take a different route through the hallways or walk with friends or a teacher to your classes. So don't put yourself in a situation where you are leaving yourself open right. uh, or leaving yourself uh, vulnerable right. to um, these kinds of situations. And, uh, of course, if you witness bullying, refuse to join in, be brave and speak out against the bully and report the bullying at school to a teacher, a counselor, a principal or a resource officer. So those are very, very important and um, also very important, something that we talked about a lot in this show, and that is to keep those communication lines open. Yes, yes. Those are all excellent points that you mentioned. So talk to your kids and tune into your kids' behaviors. Take cues from what is going on. Uh, Is their schoolwork suffering? Are they losing weight? Are they becoming withdrawn? Mm -hmm. Um, Invite their friends over so you can actually see who Mm -hmm. these kids are. You know, are they a a group of uh, good kids? Are they a group of bullies? You know, Mm -hmm. so that's very, very important. And uh, invite them to your home. Don't just let them hang out uh, at, you know, the mall or some other the movie theater or some other place. Invite them to your home so you can observe them and get to know them. Right. So that's extremely important. All right. uh, Very good show, um, Dr. Mohyuddin, as always. A very important topic and uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, one that has answered um, a lot of questions that Mm -hmm. uh, are there in um, parents' minds. And uh, I know that uh, especially with Mm cyberbullying, with Snapchat, by the way, uh, we'll talk about this in the next show that we're going to do on social media and Mm -hmm. the Internet, the dangers (laughs) Right, right. <laughs> of the internet uh-huh. and we'll talk about some of these mediums that uh, the kids are using these days and uh, the dangers of these uh, m- different media right and I just wanted to give a couple of resources mm-hmm. for on the internet for parents okay um, if they have a child who's being bullied mm-hmm. um, there's a website called stopbullying.gov gov which is a very good extensive website that has a lot of resources and tips Mm -hmm. for parents and educators and also www.thebullyproject.com so those are two excellent websites there's a a lot of different websites out there but these are Mm -hmm. two that i looked at that i i felt were really good in Mm -hmm. providing resources so if you're looking for some resources i would start there on on the internet all right excellent